Bella, another veteran recording act that has stayed true to its roots is the subject of today's profile. The latest album from the Grateful Dead will be released on Halloween, but it may not race to the top of the charts. Despite their fame and following, they've reached the top ten only once. Bill Tush has more. The Grateful Dead's upcoming album is called Built to Last. That could be a good way to describe the group. The Dead have been together for 25 years. As singer-guitarist Jerry Garcia tells us, it just gets better. For us, we've been steadily working, slowly building an audience, really, all this time. So it, it, from our point of view, from our perspective, it's, it's, it's very much slow and steady. There are plenty of the Dead fans who stuck with them for a quarter of a century, but there are more and more younger Deadheads. They named themselves, you know, they started calling themselves Deadheads sometime around, I guess, the early 70s or something. The first time I remember hearing somebody call himself a Deadhead. Yeah. And it was like, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you want to call yourself? Sure, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> as much as the band is the show, so are the fans. Dead member Bob Weir likes to see that show himself on occasion. Every now and again, I put on the disguise and go out and check things out. I, I can't really just walk around freely out there because I get besieged for autographs, pictures, people want to shake my hand and all that kind of stuff. That gets old after a couple hours. Every now and then, things in the parking lot get out of hand. Oh, come on! Oh, God, this is terrible! These outbursts have given Grateful Dead concerts some bad press in recent months. Garcia feels a responsibility to explain. We try to make an effort to say, okay, listen, here's what's happening to us. To the deadheads, we address them, you know, as, as responsible members of our community. You know, here's what you can do about it. Here's, here's what we know about it. We're passing this information on to you. If you choose to change your behavior based on this information, that would be helpful. As for the band's members themselves, while other groups see the players change and personalities clashing, these guys couldn't be happier with each other. By now, the Grateful Dead has become uh, kind of more a family tribe something you know a um, club and to think in all this time they have only made the top 10 once <laughs> once i think once isn't that right yeah uh one time that was with this last uh a touch of gray uh, off of uh, in the dark our last album <laughs> now when you come out with a new record i mean you now say hey this is going right to the top. Why would somebody make a record hoping for it not to sell? You know, it's, I mean, even we, even we have made an effort, not an effort to be commercial, but certainly we felt like, now this tune is really a hit, you know? I mean, we've never been right, you know? So how about their latest album? Oh, this definitely will go right to the top. No, no question about it. <laughs> this is honest to God, folks. This is, this is honest, this record, really, perfect. Bill Tush, CNN Entertainment News, New York. So, Bella, I think I know the answer to this question, but were you ever a deadhead? No, I'm a redhead. There's more to come, so. <laughs> the Grateful Dead, who have become masters of merchandising in their later years, have just introduced a line of Panther Dream Alpine skis, featuring artwork inspired by the dead and by guitarist Bob Weir's sideline literary activities. We talked to Weir at a press conference about the dead ski line and about the health of the band's lead guitarist, Jerry Garcia. Here's what we learned. This is, I guess, the debut or the coming out party for a new line of skis by um, Olin Lunatic Fringe. Last week, Lunatic Fringe, a division of K2, one of America's biggest ski manufacturers, introduced the Panther Dream Ski, based on Panther Dream, a children's book and tape written by the Grateful Dead's Bob Weir and his sister Wendy, and narrated by Weir himself. It is mid-afternoon in the African rainforest. Lunatic Fringe was already developing a line of skis featuring artwork based on Grateful Dead songs when K2's Tim Petrick suggested the marriage of sports, music, and art.